So that was the water turning on. In terms of the chamber itself, um, hypobaric hypoxia, the ability to simulate that or to, to elicit that, there's only um, a handful of research institutions in the United States that can um, decrease barometric pressure in the altitude chamber. By changing the pressure, uh, we're able to simulate uh, the way people really feel when they go to high altitude. And physiologically, there are differences in in what happens. We're very closely simulating an actual high altitude environment. This thing is built to actually go to 100,000 feet and to drop four atmospheres. Anytime I take a um, coworker or perhaps a class into the chamber here, um, basically you get the shock and awe response. Um, because it is like going back to the 1960s, which I totally geek out about. The original guy who had the thought of bringing this here and did the majority of the work was Dr. Bill Bynum in the early 60s. And he worked with the ROTC here at UNM and he took them down to, I think, Corpus Christi to look at a Naval Academy, I'm not sure. He saw this thing sitting there. Uh, at, at this base, and it didn't look like it was being used. And this guy was kind of fearless. He said, hey, if you're not using this, <laughs> can we have it? Through a, a series of negotiations with, uh, with the Navy and the government, uh, we were able to actually lease this uh, for like a dollar a year. And we still have the uh, letter from the Navy that says if they ever need it back, they have the right to get it back. Uh, but this thing weighs many tons. And the reason for that is it has to be very thick steel in order to withstand the pressures. To bring this thing here was a major deal. I believe they came on a railroad to UNM. So they dug this big hole dropped this thing on top of the big hole. They built this building around the hole with the big thing in here. But I came to work here in 1991. We first came over here and it was kind of a shock because no one had used it for many years. So we started to try and get this place in order. I, I'm happy that I was here to start it back up. Since then, we've really been doing quite a few studies in here. They've been funded by NASA, by the Army. People have stayed overnight in the chamber. I've always had that connection with exercise and high altitude. Um, and then when I got here to UNM, I actually didn't know when I arrived that we had this very unique altitude chamber. It's pretty crazy when you look at it. Um, it does look like it came off of a World War II submarine. So the first time you go up in the chamber, it's, it's an experience for sure. For my study, we have three different conditions. Exercise at high altitude. We're simulating an altitude of about 14,000 feet. Here we have Sandia, which is above 10,000. So we're going up quite high. We're looking at about an hour of cycling at that altitude, it's moderate intensity. And the second condition is exercise in low altitude or just Albuquerque altitude of 1600 meters. And then we're also doing a third condition, which is just passive rest at high altitude to see if altitude alone definitely has an effect on your ability to maintain exercise. In the chamber, it's sealed off and we have a technician outside here who then takes us up in altitude. That is sort of a creep thing when you go inside it because you know, you're ready to go and then you're in there and you hear this whack, whack, whack and it's closing the door. You have competitive athletes, wildland firefighters, mountaineers, who their occupation is to go up to these altitudes and conduct some sort of strenuous physical activity or exercise. We want to be able to quantify how exercise is healthy for individuals who commonly go out and hike or ride or run at high altitude. I'm super proud of my students 
who do work in here. It's not easy. I'm super happy about the work that we've done here. Bynum. We really wanted to give him a lot of credit for what he had done because it has changed the science that has come out of the University of New Mexico. It's all because he had the thought back in the 1960s to bring this thing here and he realized it might be an important unit for education. Instead of thinking of this as sort of an old thing, I, I think that it's historical and it's amazing and it's been running since the 1960s. Even though it might look like it's from a different lifetime, um, the research that we do here is, is still quite impactful. It was built well and it was built to last and here we are in 2023 and it's still ticking. So pretty impressive. We think that there's no reason that it won't last another 50 years.